Okay, thanks for coming. Um, I know the mayor is giving uh, almost daily press conferences around 4 o'clock, and at the risk of stepping on the numbers that I give him, um, I'm going to be giving him, and I'm going to be using numbers uh, that were from the close of business the day before. So the numbers I'm going to talk about were from the close of business yesterday, and then when we talk about these numbers on Monday, uh, we'll add in Friday, and we're also going to be working on Saturday. And so we'll always be one day behind, so there's not these conflicting numbers going on. Um, first, let me thank a, a couple of partners uh, that are working with us on this uh, project that we couldn't do it without them. One is a, a company called Human Flyers, and the young man that runs that and owns that company is a returning citizen, has a social worker degree, and he currently is out in the city of Detroit going door to door uh, trying to find customers that were shut off uh, over the last year. In all of 2019 to today, if we cut off a home in the city of Detroit and, and in our system that water is still off, uh, this group of young men are going door to door uh, with information uh, to give to anyone that's in that home. And normally we have three buckets that we place people in in this particular uh, group. Um, and first of all, let me say that we gave, we started out with a list of 3,600 homes that were cut off over for, for the last year that in our system are not back on. And when we scrubbed the list, we found that 800 of those homes in fact had new accounts, meaning someone other than the person who was on the account when it was shut has opened up a new account and the water is off. And typically that could be a new tenant, but in all likelihood it's probably just a different family member uh, in the home. So if the wife's uh, name was on the water when it was cut off a year ago uh, and now the husband puts the water on, we allow them to do that because we're trying to get the water on. And if that wife, who has an inactive account at that particular house, ever moves to another location in Detroit, uh, the bill that she left behind will go with her. So the list started out at 3,600. Uh, after we uh, scrubbed it, uh, it turned out to be 2,800. And we gave that list to Human Flyers, and they have assured me that they will get through all 2,800 locations by Sunday night. So every night they will report to me, and I'm expecting for them to do at least 1,000 a day, uh, what, they got, what they got done. And by Monday, uh, press conference time, 4 o'clock or so, we'll be able to report to you uh, what took place at those 2,800 locations. Uh, again, in all likelihood, um, the person could have moved, uh, the person could have turned the water back on themselves, or the person could be living there uh, with a family with no water. And they will be given the information that if they simply make the phone call to Wayne Metro, that a work order will be developed if they qualify and the water will be back on. So let me talk a minute about our other partner, Wayne, Meco, Wayne Metro, who have, has been uh, absolutely uh, marvelous at working with us. Uh, there have, as, as some of in the media have reported, uh, we have had problems with customers calling and uh, either the phone just rings or they get dropped out. And uh, I think everybody understands when we put, a, put this project together on a Monday and we go live on a Wednesday and we have to train employees, and we don't know what the call volume uh, to expect will be, uh, Wayne Metro's technology got overrun. But as of uh, 4.30 yesterday, AT&T was able to get into uh, their shop and increase the bandwidth uh, of their system to allow more calls to come in. And uh, I can report today that they are able to take 250 calls at any given time. And if there are more than 250 calls, uh, they can accept as many as 300 in the queue, meaning that as soon as one call is, is cleared, 
uh, the next call in the queue will be answered. Uh, that certainly is a lot better situation than the phone just ringing and people dropping out of the system. When I called Wayne Metro right before coming into this uh, press conference, there were 37 calls that were in the queue. In addition, Wayne Metro added four call takers today. On Monday, they will uh, add an additional five new call takers, and they'll have a total of 24. So we think that we have the technology issue worked through. Uh, we think that we, by Monday, will have staffing. And if I'm wrong, the 24 call takers are not enough. I will send customer service representatives from my office to Wayne Metro to assist, uh, being that they have the technology available to be able to answer the phones uh, to make sure that we're answering those calls. So Thursday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and these numbers again ended uh, Thursday evening, uh, Wayne Metro had answered uh, 3,020 calls. That doesn't include the people that may have called and got dropped out of the system, but 3,020 calls. 19% of those calls, work orders were developed and sent to uh, the Detroit Water Department for the water to be restored. So let me kind of go through the process. Wayne Metro answers the phone and they take some very basic information and they make a determination as to whether or not the person based on what the, how they answered the survey qualify for the $25 program and as I, I want to stress to Detroiters that this program is for customers who do not currently have water service and they sent over 576 customers out of 3,020 so you can see the volume that's coming in of people that don't qualify because their water is not in an off status. And so we're asking the public to uh, be mindful of that and let's uh, all work really hard to get the people into the system that need the work. If you need assistance, um, you certainly can call next week uh, after we get through this uh, short period of, of volume that we have. So. Wayne Metro sent over 576 uh, work orders that they believe need to be restored. I have a team that are working on the fourth floor. They will go through that list and they will make sure that these customers are actually customers that have an, an account and the water is off. And then uh, there were six customers who uh, one happened to be a church, not a residential situation. So they didn't qualify. And there's a, a variety of reasons why the other five didn't qualify. So we ended up with 571 uh, work orders to be done. Of the, the 570, 91 of those customers were pen, in pending status, meaning their water was on, but they had received a door knocker and they would have been shut off. So they automatically we're moved into the $25 program. We don't have to go out and restore their water. It hadn't been disconnected. That left 480 requests. As of yesterday, we had completed 73, 73. And so that leaves, uh, if the math is uh, trying to do the math, uh, about 350 plus whatever else we get that comes in today. So the slowdown in the process in the beginning, the first couple of days, has been the telephones, the technology and having staff available. Now that we've worked that out, we have another slowdown, and that's a, a not having enough plumbers under contract to go into homes and make repairs that DWSD would not normally make. And you can imagine that if homes have been out of water for a long time or had been vacant for a long time, the surprising part for us is that we have so many of them that need meters. And so this is not as simple as going out to the stop box and turning a key to turn the water on. We have to go into the home and do the repairs to the, 
to the plumbing system so that it will accept a meter and then we have to install a meter. If this were as simple as going out and turning a key, we could do each one in about 20 minutes. But we have to go into the home, there are plumbing leaks once we turn the water on uh, that we're, we're going to repair. Not something that DWSD normally would do. Fix a, a private uh, person's ho uh, private home situation. However, today we are putting three Detroit-based plumbing contracting companies uh, under contract, and they will go out ahead of the uh, meter ops people that have to go out and put new meters in, and uh, we will get a cadence to this uh, repair system that we will be able to uh, go through this list pretty quickly uh, starting next week. We will send people out ahead of time to do the markings if we have to dig up uh, the front lawn to make sure that the stop box is operable. We will send out a people ahead of time to make sure that we know where the stop box is so that no one's wasting time. We will send plumbers ahead of time to get the setups done. We will get the meters put on and by next week uh, you will see the numbers come down fairly quickly. So that's Human Flyers and Wayne Metro. Um, let me just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, some things that uh, I've seen reported in the news at, at Costco's and other stores where people are out. And, and this, is almost, uh, this is almost a funny story because I, I got in from running this morning and my wife was gone and she left me a note that she had gone to Myers, 8 Mile and, and Woodward. And then she sent an email mail to my daughter saying she's looking for bottled water. I mean, that is the last thing a person should be looking for in this crisis. DWSD has some of the best water in the country, if not the world. You are not going to run out of water. Toilet paper we may need. Water, we have plenty of it. Just fill up a five-gallon jug as many as you need, and you will be okay. So the point I want to make is the water is safe. I, I've never, I, I can't understand this big run on bottled water in the city of Detroit or in the region. Um, the water is safe, it's clean, there's nothing about the coronavirus that is going to have an effect on our water system. And then finally, before I take questions, let me just uh, remind people that, you know, uh, we've expanded the RAP program because it is still going on. I mean, uh, although we have this uh, emergency $25 program to get water on, if assistance is needed, it's still available. And it's been expanded because the program before, you had to be 150% below poverty to qualify. And now that's been raised to 200% of poverty. And the difference for that is it's huge. I mean, a family of four, under 150% uh, of poverty is about $36,000. That moves up to $50,000. So if a grandmother is raising three to four kids and she's making $37,000, she wouldn't have qualified. Now she does at $50,000. And so that's a big deal. The amount of the dollars available, again, Oakland and Macomb County didn't spend their allotment of the wrap dollars, and they reallocated approximately $1.5 to both Detroit and Flint. Detroit got an additional 1.1, Flint got 400,000. So when you put th those dollars on top of the 1.3 that I had in the bank to service people, we have about two and a half million dollars in order to go into someone's home, make the repairs to their plumbing in order to get them to an average bill. We'll do that up to $1,000 and then we will give them $25 a month in assistance on, an average bill is $75. So if we give them $25 in assistance on a monthly basement, they have to pay 50. If they make their $50 payment over the next year, we completely wipe out their arrears. That's a better program than the $25 program because when you pay $25 while this, this uh, crisis is going on, you still will be, your bill will still be accruing. If you get into the RAP program, 
we will wipe out the debt. And if you have more than the average amount of arrears, we'll put you back in the program for another year to give you an opportunity to let us pay it off. And so that's how you make water affordable in, in the city of Detroit. And we're, we're proud of the program, and we just want to re remind people that every Detroiter has an opportunity not to see a service center rush it if they ask for help, no matter what their income is. We have a program for them. And with that said, I, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, Director Brown, considering that initial 3,600 uh, list, can you explain like what qualified people into that list? Was it just customers that failed to make payments and were put onto it, or yeah. just general shutoffs? No, it, 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 uh, it's, it was customers that could have been as high as $1,000 in the arrears. Uh, some of them were shut because of compliance issues. They don't have a meter. Um, that, that's what's surprising about the program that we're running now. We're going into homes, and they don't have meters. If they don't have meters, that means they weren't being billed. They're getting free water. And, you know, right now, it's, it's no questions asked. We're allowing everybody to just come up with a clean slate. We're going to put a meter in, and we're going to move forward. But, uh, yes, there were compliance issues. People didn't have meters. Uh, they wouldn't let us in to put in a meter. Uh, and we ended up shutting off the house. Uh, today, uh, we haven't shut off anyone for an arrears that was below $1,000. And so right now, all of our crews, as you can imagine, are working on turning water on. It would be a defeating purpose for me to be out there right now uh, trying to shut the water off. Um, that I'm not saying that there's a moratorium, but I'm saying that at some point we will get back to that. Uh, but right now, it's all hands on deck to turn the water on as many homes as possible so that everybody can wash their hands and, and have good practice, good hygiene practices uh, during this emergency. So I guess just to be clear, in terms of the 3,000 some calls that Wayne Metro has got, but only, I can't remember the number you said, 700 or so are they generated a work order for, th those were all people who didn't, uh, weren't, didn't qualify for the program in some way? Yes, uh, in some cases, uh, we talked to a, a, a lady who uh, on March 6th came in and put down a, a down payment and got into uh, the RAP program. And in the system, her water was on. Uh, she just wanted a better deal. She wanted the $25 deal as to the opposed to the one. So in most cases, their water is on and they're looking for the $25 uh, deal. And uh, uh, unfortunately, that is only going to apply to customers that are in a shutoff status, not if your water is on. And, and those are most of the calls that are coming in the Wayne Metro. Their water is currently on. So people who are shutoff eligible are still eligible for the it, $25 program. If, in fact, they've received a, a door knocker saying they're going to be shut off in 10 days, and we had 91 people in that category, uh, they were very easy for us. We don't have to go shut them off, uh, shut them back on. They've never been shut off but they are eligible for the program and they immediately went into the program. So there are two buckets, the people that are still on but have a pending shutoff notice, they go straight into the program and then the bucket that we have to go out and do some type of repair in order to get the water back on. Is it possible that, that by the time you guys have knocked on everybody's door, everybody's door and determined who really lives in a house that has no water service, that you're gonna have everybody who lives in a home in Detroit back to having no. water service? No, I'd be naive uh, to believe that we're going to have everybody. Mm -hmm. um, that is, when you look at the, the assistance programs uh, in Philadelphia, anywhere around the country that are developed, the hardest part is getting people to come in and apply for the program. Uh, in Detroit, you know, I've been here all of my life, a lot of it is just, uh, we have people that are just proud. They don't want to ask for help. In their minds, they're going to try to fix it themselves. And time goes on and, and, and they don't have water and they're not able to fix it themselves. And what we're saying is, come in. I mean, uh, uh, D'Amico, uh, a lot of you have interviewed him. Uh, I called him. B bring him in now, D'Amico. Where are these people that you know about He's brought me 39 people in the, pa in the past, and I've got every one of those people cut back on. And so we're, we're going to find out in the city of Detroit uh, with people that have water off 
when there's no cost, all you have to do is make the phone call to get it on, how many there are. But do I believe that everyone is going to come in? Uh, I, no. But we're going to we're going to continue to reach out. And I mean, you can't find another water utility in America that actually puts door hangers on. Most water utilities simply put you on the tax rolls, and when the property sold, they collect their arrears. Very efficient for the utility. Very little cost. We're literally going out after we put a door knocker on. First of all, that's unusual. I don't know anybody else that does that. But then 48 hours later, we go back to say, here's another door knocker. You've been shut off. We see that you haven't been put back on. Call this number, Wayne Metro. And in that program, all you have to do is make the appointment. You don't even have to have come in yet. Just make the appointment, and we'll turn the water back on. And so... Uh, it, 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 no, we won't get everybody, but we're gonna, that's not going to stop us from continuing to reach out and try to get everybody in the program. Do you see this program continuing after the coronavirus crisis has passed? Um, uh, I, I, I see... Uh, the outreach? I, the outreach certainly will continue. It was going on actually before the, the coronavirus. Uh, we will continue to use human flyers to go door to door. Um, we will continue to do the media outreach. We're, we're, we've got billboards up now. We're running commercials. We're on social media. We certainly send out, do the normal things by putting out information on the bills. Um, but yeah, we will continue to hammer very hard about these programs. And, and I tell you, we're getting calls from all over the country uh, asking us about how we implemented the program, where the dollars came from and such. And so I, I think you're gonna see this uh, become a trend around the country. Uh, as to how you help people uh, uh, that are below poverty. And so exactly how long will the $25 program? And, until there's an announcement that the crisis is over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we, we're, we're paying attention to the public health officials. Uh, and uh, if, they, if they raise the level, um, then we may adjust our policy even more. But uh, we're going to continue the program as long as the threat is, is out there. And then at that point, yeah. Um, will people pay the yeah at that, at that point all of the people that are in this $25 program would be put into two buckets one uh, if they are 200% are below poverty we'll roll them right into the RAP program we'll go out and spend $1,000 to fix their plumbing issues we'll give them monthly assistance we'll wipe out their arrears but if someone makes uh, eighty, dollars $100,000 and they're behind and don't qualify for 200% below poverty we'll put them in the 10, 30, 50 plan. The average customer in the city of Detroit that fits that category owes about $700 in arrears. They'd have to put 10% down, $70. And they have to pay their normal bill and we'll structure a program over the next two to three years to allow them to pay down their debt. And so there's a program for every customer. Uh, you just have to come in and be a participant in applying. Um, you, you heard me talk uh, a while ago about the governor making uh, funds available through the uh, state emergency relief fund. But that's going to require the customer to allow us to fill out documents in order to send to the state so that they can receive this benefit. And so they, you know, I'm, I'm fearful that we're going to cut the water back on. They're going to make the appointment, but they may not show up. For the appointment, they may not make a twenty-five dollar uh, payment. We're, we're, I'm, I'm assured this most people will, but there will be a category that don't. And so, at that point, uh, you know, you can't get into a program and have a legitimate bill. We'll, we'll have to deal with you accordingly. And you just do you happen to know how many people are enrolled in RAP right now? I know that. Uh, over, since the life of the program, there's 16,500. Uh, but they come in and they go out. Uh, so you've been in the program for a year. We've paid off your arrears, and you're back on your feet. I mean, uh, uh, most of the customers uh, have lost a job. They've hit some a hard time, and they need a year or a little longer to get back on track. Um, there's, there's no customers coming into our office saying, we want free water. No, nobody says that. We want, we want free water. They want a water bill that they can afford to pay. And, you know, I talk about this around the country. 
This RAP program is bringing in $65 million a year more than before we instituted the program. Because when people can pay something and stay current with the part that they're paying, they pay more. And so this isn't uh, welfare or uh, some in entitlement program. This is a good business decision to give assistance because it allows people to at least pay something. Nobody's going to live in a home without water for very long. Most people are going to find a way to get the water on. And we just want to help them do it and make sure that it's being done legally as opposed to just them turning it on themselves or taking the meter off. Dr. Brown, can you explain how, uh, if a customer wants to voluntarily have their water shut off, how that procedure yeah. works? Yeah, we, that, that was, that's, that's some uh, of the calls that we got. We have, uh, you know, 50% of my customers are uh, below 150% of poverty, and 50% of them are renting. And so we have a program that's pretty unique in, in the city. We will allow a tenant to turn the water on in their name and keep it so that if they're, they, they don't have to pay the landlord to pay the water bill. In some cases that we've run into today, we've had the landlord come in and say, I shut the water off, I asked for it to be shut off, and I don't want you to cut it on. The tenant's, li the tenant's lease has expired, and I'm not going to renew it. At that point, unfortunately, we have to tell the tenant that this is a landlord-tenant issue, that you have to go across the street to 36th District Court and work that out with them. But the property owner has rights. If they own the property and if they don't want the water on in your name because they're not going to renew your lease, unfortunately, we have to abide by what the owner of that property wants. But in most cases, the landlord would be very willing to give them a lease that says we can turn the water on in their name and then if the bill doesn't get paid, it stays with that account holder. We don't hold the owner responsible for it. So is it an affidavit program that kind of requirement still exists as it stands right now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Director Brown, did you see how many households are shut off? Uh, when you started, let's say as of Monday, how many households were there? But we, You're hoping to reach either through yeah. you know, publicity or phone calls or door to door? Yeah, I, I said that there are 3,000 600 that are in our billing system out of 240,000 residential accounts. Um, they are in our system at, as water being off, that we shut the water off sometime in 2019 through today. And in our system, that water is still not back on. Now, out of those 3,600, when we scrubbed the list, we found out that in 800 of those homes, the water was back on in someone else's name. Sometimes it's a new tenant. Sometimes it's just a different family member. We, quite frankly, we're very liberal with that. We, we don't care. We, we want to give everybody an opportunity to get the water off. And so the person that has the inactive account because they didn't pay the bill, if they ever move to a different location and try to turn the water on in their name, that bill that they left at that point would go with them. But we're not going to stop someone else in the house from getting the water on. So the kids will, will have water. Okay, so, so, so we got about 2,800, and we're sending people out to knock on all of those doors. If the people are there, we'll give them the information, call this number. If they're not there, they'll put a door hanger on there. They'll also document it by taking a picture on it that they have the address in the picture, and they'll send that to us, and we'll know that that house has been shut. Is there an opportunity to go um, just kind of follow and get some shots of the flyers? Yeah, you can, you can set that up with Brian. Okay. Uh, they'll be out uh, Saturday and Sunday, 8 to 10 of them, and they can do about 1,000 a day. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, sir.